everyone and welcome. My name is Gretchen and we are here in our year-round separate kitchen at the American Revolution Museum at Yorktown on our Revolution War era farm. Uh, March 25th is International Waffle Day and so we thought it might be fun to try out an 18th century waffle recipe. So let's get started. again and what's great about this recipe is there's very few ingredients and it's actually pretty simple so if you watched um, our pancake video or just know a little bit about 18th century cooking in general you'll know that sometimes it's not always helpful like they might say cook it until it's done season it to taste um, or they add so many ingredients that it becomes overwhelming but this one's pretty simple and I think you'll find as we go along that the ingredients make it different. It's a little bit like a shortbread or like a crispy waffle. It's not like an egg batter waffle like we might be used to. So it has um, a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, an ounce of cinnamon, and a glass of rose water. So that seems like a lot of ingredients, but the other day I tried the recipe out and I halved everything and it wasn't nearly enough. So we're actually going to try it today with the amount that Hannah suggests, and I'll show you that it's actually easy to convert the pound um, if you don't have a scale handy to, to weigh out butter. A uh, pound of butter is about four sticks of butter, so that's pretty easy to get together. Um, a pound of flour is about three cups of flour. A pound of sugar is about two cups of sugar. And the glass of rose water, rose water is interesting because it is not something that we use a whole lot of today. Uh, when people think of rose water, they think of lotion or soap. In fact, when we were cooking this the other day, one of my coworkers said, why is it so soapy smelling in here? Um, and it, it is hard to get used to if it's not something you like. It can also sometimes be difficult to find. So if you want to do this recipe at home and try it the way Hannah suggests you try it, um, you can get rose water concentrate. Um, so it would be uh, a little, just a little bit that you would be using, not a ton of it. Um, or if you go to an international store, sometimes they have rose water that would be more like what they would have been using in the 18th century. If you don't want to use rose water at all, if the thought of it is upsetting to you, you could omit it altogether. You could substitute it with maybe lemon juice. I thought orange blossom water might be nice, or you could even just use vanilla if you're more comfortable with something like that. Uh, so we're gonna put all of our ingredients together. I've already put in the three cups of flour into the bowl, and I've also measured out the two cups of sugar, which seems like a lot and it is um, but just think about it like this we are not going to be adding anything for topping so we will not be putting whipped cream or syrup or powdered sugar or any any fruit on top of it so you'll be getting all your sugar in there and i also got the butter um, and i want to soften it up because we're going to be using our hands to kind of mash it in i have washed my hands they're all sanitized um, even by 18th century standards they're pretty sanitized so i've got the butter right there and we're just gonna mash it all together and we don't want it so soft that it's liquid but we want to be able to work with it a little bit so you'll find that you're kind of taking those little cubes of butter and mashing them which is actually kind of fun you gotta get your hands dirty if not you can always set it out for a little bit longer and get it more room temperature so that you can kind of mash it with a spoon if you don't really like using your hands but again I find it kind of fun what you're going to find is that it's so like cookie dough. It's very much like cookie dough. The other thing that Hannah says to do is to roll, roll it into a little ball of dough um, the size of a nutmeg. So either Hannah had a very small waffle iron, I'll show you our waffle iron in a second, or maybe she just assumed that you were going to take several of the little balls of dough and put them on the waffle iron. And we experimented with a few different types, and I'll show you that in a second. So waffles, um, you know, we're not necessarily exactly sure how they get here. It's definitely something today we associate uh, with breakfast in this country. Um, there is, you know, a lot of times people will talk about them being from Belgium or the Netherlands of some sort. It could be that the English had already been introduced to them when they arrived here um, in North America. So maybe they brought them with them. I think, 
even though they were around and there's recipes for it, it's still a little bit of a novelty, um, I think, for the English anyway, or for colonists. I think the reason for that might be that it takes time to make them. So if you're trying to make a bread to go along with your meal, not necessarily this for breakfast, but if you're trying to make a bread to go along with your meal, you're not necessarily gonna sit there and spend a couple of minutes on one waffle and then a couple of minutes on another waffle and a couple of minutes on another. So I think maybe it would be like for a special occasion, but I think it's a little bit like that today. I don't have waffles every day for breakfast. I think it's something that if you wanna spend the time to do it, you can. All right, we're gonna add some rose water now because it's gotten to a point where the butter's kind of getting stuck with the flour in a good way, but I, don't think we'll use all of this rose water, but we'll start with a little bit of it. And this is not the concentrated version, so that's why I can use so much of it. And you don't really taste it. It's a little bit like a flavoring. It's like vanilla. You think you want a lot of vanilla, like the vanilla extract, because it smells so good, but if you use too much of it, it's really bitter. So we don't wanna, oops, we don't wanna use too much of this either. And then it calls for about an ounce of cinnamon. You could always add nutmeg or some other spice if you if you like but we're going to try it just the way she suggests today let's see i'm going to put just a little bit of the cinnamon in there kind of mash it in good and i was using brown sugar today they do have white sugar available to them but anything that's more processed is going to be a little bit more expensive and so what we depict on this farm here is a middling farm family so they're not wealthy people but they're not poor either they're kind of in between somewhere so just like today if you're a middle class family or consider yourself middle class you don't um you know you might buy some things that are important to you or you might say you know what we don't need that we're not buying it and i think the same would be true for them so if they're happy with brown sugar that might be what they're using so on a middle class farm like this almost anybody could be the cook the free farmer's wife is typically the cook on a middle class farm because um, there's maybe one to three people enslaved on a farm this size and so a lot of times they're field hands with the farmer and the older son so the free farmer's wife and children might be the cooks on the farm and so they would get up in the morning you know with the sunlight get the fire going make some breakfast and then start working on their big meal of the day so you definitely want a bread to go along with that midday meal so today we're gonna we're gonna make it waffles so we've got a nice ball of dough there i'm gonna Clean my hands just a little bit and then we're going to see if our waffle iron is hot enough so i've been kind of preheating it a little bit and i also brought out some lard which uh, is great for cooking with because especially that cast iron it helps keeps things from burning or sticking pretty well but remember we also put in a pound of butter so that'll probably help out with it a bit too but we want them to be nice and crisp we don't want kind of soft waffles or like my friend was saying earlier ego waffles so we're gonna work on that so this um waffle iron down here i've got it set up kind of on the gridiron and it's kind of just close to the fire so it's getting too a little bit warm but hopefully not too hot so i'm gonna make a few of the balls ahead of time the balls of dough ahead of time now um hannah says a nutmeg. I'm going to make them slightly larger, maybe like the size of a walnut, and I'm going to have them ready because when I take the waffle iron out, it's pretty hot, and I kind of have to balance it, you'll see, and put these on there, so I want to make sure that we have some ready to go. Take a little bit of that out. And if they feel a little bit too sticky, you can always add a little bit more flour to them if you're worried about them sticking. Actually, that one might be just a little bit too big. And adjust it. I didn't use all of that rose water because this seemed like the perfect consistency on its own. All right, just a few of these, have them set up. And then I'll go down there and get that waffle iron. All right, I'm gonna make some space for it. Because like I said, it's kind of awkward the way it's set up. And this is a little rectangle basically with long tongs at the end so that you can cook it without getting too close to the fire. So like our spider or our long um, handled frying pan, the same, the same way. All right, so I'm gonna, this is our waffle iron. And 
if I balance it like this, and I use a little bit of the lard, which is specifically pig fat, which they would cook with quite often, lard and butter. And they use other animal fats too, but they eat a lot of pork. Right. We're gonna set a few of these on here. Now, when I was experimenting the other day, there definitely can be too small, and then you have a tiny little bite-sized waffle, and if that's what you're going for, that's all right. But they can be too much, too. So it's just like, if you've ever wondered why you can't get a giant cookie out of a whole bunch of cookie dough, um, if it was one big ball of dough, then uh, it would probably go everywhere. So we've got these three in here, and now I'm gonna take it over to the fire. And I've got a piece of firewood um, at the end of these and irons, and then I've got the gridiron kind of holding it up because I don't want to put it directly in the fire. So I'm just going to move this around. Yesterday, my coworker said when he was messing around with the recipe, he used a little trivet and put hot coals underneath of it. But this worked out well the other day when I was doing it. In fact, I think I'm going to add some wood to the fire. gets nice and hot. So when you're doing down hearth cooking or open hearth cooking, a lot of times you're using the coals and not the flame itself. And so you need to keep feeding the fire so the fire keeps breaking down and you have nice coals to work with. This one doesn't require a ton of coals, but I also don't want a great big flame either. We'll set him down there a little bit. Even though, like I was saying, this is kind of a novelty, it's fun for sure, but if you've got a lot of other work to do on a farm, which you would if you were a middle-class farmer in the 18th century, this might not be something you would have time for every day, but it certainly is a lot of fun to, to try it. So what's nice about open hearth cooking is you can cook many things at once. So I don't just have to be baking waffles. I could have the Dutch oven going. I could have a super stew above the fire. I could have trivets, um, the frying pan that we talked about, or the spider. So you can have many things cooking at once if you have the iron implements um, to, to cook with. I'm gonna flip it over, make sure it doesn't get too hot. So hopefully in the 18th century, you're not having to spend a ton of time in the kitchen past about midday. So you'd be working towards that midday meal. So you're gonna cook enough that you can eat off of that for the rest of the day. So I think that dinner would be the meal you're looking forward to most because that's the hot meal. It's the meal you get to go into the house and get out of the kitchen or get out of the field. It's cooler, in theory, cleaner. Um, you can rest, you can eat, and go back out and work the rest of the day. And then supper is really just going to supplement that big meal. It's almost always served cold because you're not going to restart a fire um, just to heat up your supper. But they usually like to have a bread with their meal. It might be in the form of corn cake, it might be a yeast bread, uh, it might be a pancake, it might be a waffle. Um, but nice to have a bread that goes along with your meal. So think about waffles at any time of day. I know it's very popular now to have breakfast for dinner. Um, that is not a new thing. That is something that folks have been doing all along. If it tastes good and it's there and it's ready to eat, um, you should have it any meal you want. All right, should be about ready. It's steaming a little bit, which is a good sign. I'm gonna open it up on the table and let it cool for a second. So hopefully it'll crisp up just a little bit. You can see it's a little crispier on that side because that was the side closer to the oven. And then my friend Bert is gonna come over with a plate and we're gonna try to flip it out on there and see how it looks, see how it turned out. Oh, well done, it's beautiful. 
Oh, I only have like 60 more to make. <laughs> yeah, that did turn out very nice. Good idea, Bert. All right. So put a couple more on. Try it again. If we're going to sound the wave. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We're going to make it big now. Right. We'll set that one on. again so that's good. There's a little lock on the end you gotta be careful for. There we go. So again crispy on this edge that was closer to the fire but that one's pretty good too. We'll let it cool off for a second and then we will use the flippy magic of that bird's plate there. Okay, so oh well done. Perfect. off and then we'll put them on there. So my friends uh, Morgan and Bert have agreed to taste our waffles and hopefully they like them. <laughs> Is it? Mm -hmm. Good. So these are a little Perfect. different from waffles from what we're used to like we were talking about. They more crisp, a little bit like shortbread, not so much like a fluffy waffle uh, with syrup like we're used to for breakfast, but they don't seem to mind it too much. So. Works out pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, everyone. I hope you like the recipe. I hope you try it out at home. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and drop a comment below. Thank you. <laughs>